Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of air quality. So actually what it is, is uh, we have some MQ sensors, which are gas sensors, um, and a CO2 sensor. And the status of the CO2 sensor can be thought of as a measure of air quality. So this has four classes at the end. Here's the CO2 sensor, and then here are these MQ sensors. We're gonna use the MQ sensor data to try to predict the CO2 level. Um, so it says a CO2 level of 1 is a normal situation with clean air. Uh, a CO2 level with 2 is uh, cooking, uh, so it's a light amount of, of smoke. Um, CO2 of 3 here is means there is a presence of smoke, burning paper, or wood uh, with closed windows or doors. And then 4 would be just cleaning, uh, the use of spray or liquid detergents with ammonia and or alcohol. So we're going to try to guess, uh, predict the uh, which state the CO2 sensor will return based on the other sensors. So let's hop into the notebook. Um, we're going to use NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. For pre-processing, we're just going to use the train test split function from sklearn. And we're going to use a random forest classifier as our model. Um, I'm going to try to um, output some measures of feature importance today using SHAP values. So I'm importing the SHAP library from Python. I mean, sorry, uh, the SHAP Python library. So let's go ahead and import all of this and load in the data using pandas.readcsv. And we'll grab the file path to the CSV file up here, copy that, paste it in, and we'll take a look. So it's just six features, and you'll notice right off the bat that we don't have uh, header names here. So I'm going to go in to our read CSV function and write uh, names. And we'll just give these columns some names. Let's do MQ1, uh, MQ2, because these are the MQ sensors. So I'll just do MQ1 through MQ6. And then last, I'll have CO2, which will be the, output, the uh, target column. All right, so now they have some column names. Let's also uh, check out data.info so we can see if we have missing values. No missing values here, um, and everything is integers. So there's very minimal pre-processing. All we have to do is split the data. We actually don't even have to scale the data since we're doing a random forest model, and tree models do not require scaled data. So we'll write a function, pre-process inputs. All this will do is split the data set. So we'll start by creating a copy. And then we'll split first the data frame into X and Y, where Y is what we're trying to predict, so that's the CO2 column. And X is all the rest of the data, so we'll drop the CO2 column from axis one. Then we'll do our train test split. So this will be X train, X test, Y train, and Y test, using the train test split function from sklearn. Um, we're gonna split X and Y, <coughs> and give a train size train size of 70%, um, also including shuffle equals true, so that'll shuffle the data before it makes the split, and we'll give it a random state so we can uh, ensure the shuffle is always done in the same way. Then we'll just return these four sets of values, uh, these four sets of the data, and we'll get them back over here. So I'm going to pass in data to the function We'll take a look at X train. This is now just 70% of the data, and the CO2 column is stored in Y train. The other 30% is stored in the test set. All right, so now let's do training. Um, so this is just going to be very short. All I'm going to do is set up our random forest model. So model equals random forest classifier, giving this a random state so we can reproduce the results. And we'll fit the model to the train set. And we'll get the results as well. So the accuracy we'll get from model.score on X test and Y test. And we'll print it out. Accuracy will display it to two decimal places as a percentage and format it with ACK times 100 since we want to see it as a percent. And we have 94% accuracy, so fairly good. Um, but I, I would now like to try to get a measure of feature importance for each of the features. So um, what I mean by feature importance, well, really, this would be uh, like feature impact. 
uh, with shaft values. Shaft values basically measure um, which features are most responsible for a change in the output of the of the model. So um, feature impact with shap values. So we're going to create an explainer object that comes from shap.tree explainer. So this is a, an object that's built to explain uh, decision trees or random forests or some sort of uh, boosted trees. Any tree-based model you can pass in here. So let's pass in model. And then we'll generate some shap values based on uh, the explainer. So we can use explainer.shap values uh, and pass in a test set, so x test, and we'll store the results in the shap values here. All right, uh, that worked. So now what we can do is generate a summary plot using shap.summary plot. It's a very easy to use library. We just pass in the shap values along with the test set, and we'll specify the class names so we have uh, we know which classes we're dealing with. Um, we should use the same classes as we have in our model. So model.classes returns one, two, three, and four. Uh, so I could just put that in there. All right, let's take a look at this. So this just gives you a very quick idea of uh, which features are most responsible for the prediction made. So you can see um, MQ5 uh, looks like it is most responsible. Um, let's take a look at X test again. Um, so MQ5 has the largest feature impact. So you can see this is the um, this means that a change in this column results in the largest change in probability for uh, the classes in in the output. So you can actually see the distribution of classes. This is class one, class two, class four, class three, uh, and they are. They have different. Uh, they're differently affected by different features. So for MQ5, um, you can see that class three, the change in probability for class three is quite small. Um, and if you're not sure what I mean by probability, we do model dot predict proba, pass in x test, we get a set of probabilities for each prediction. So the change in one of these, uh, on average, is given by uh, these values. So uh, for MQ5, um, a change in this feature, MQ5, results in a very large change in class 4's probability and class 2's probability. So that would be this one and this one. These two values are affected greatly by a change in MQ5. However, class 3 is hardly affected at all. So this value is not affected very much by a change in MQ5. Um, so I want to see um, I, I would like to point out this measure of feature impact is not necessarily um, it does not necessarily mean that these are the most important features so all this means is that the actual output is affected by the feature it is not necessarily saying your model would be better um, is better because of the feature so we should test that out a little bit I just want to see um, overall it looks like MQ5 has much more uh, feature impact than MQ6. So let's see what happens if we drop MQ5 and look at the accuracy overall compared to if we drop MQ6 and see the accuracy. Um, now po possibly what we'll see is that the accuracy will go down more substantially when we drop MQ5 than when we drop MQ6. Uh, but let's take a look. So I'll create a new model over here, um, except I'll fit it to xtrain.drop MQ5 from axis 1. Uh, and then I will display the accuracy underneath, but d evaluate it on xtest.dropmq5. So this is just uh, train, retraining the model without using the MQ5 feature. All right, and our accuracy has dropped down to 92.78 from 94. So I want to do it one more time using the MQ6, which looked like it had much less feature impact so this we might expect to see a higher accuracy because this feature was not as responsible for the predictions and we do see a little bit so it's nothing too substantial but it, it does seem to uh, look like MQ5 is an important feature um, let's see if any of the others go lower than MQ5 so we could do MQ1 
and that's that's almost nothing. MQ1 has it looks like MQ1 had very little effect. Wow, it actually went up. Look at that. Uh, removing MQ1 actually increased the accuracy of the model, um, which is interesting to see that it it has about medium feature impact. So, like I'm saying, uh, these are not necessarily measures of how uh, your model's performance is affected uh, by the features, but rather just the raw predictions, uh, the probability values are changed. Uh, we'll try MQ2. And that's also, that actually is even higher <laughs> than MQ1. Um, wow, that's so interesting. MQ2 has a very high feature impact as well. So it's interesting to see that MQ6, when we drop it, uh, it, the performance goes down. Sorry, MQ5 when we drop it, the performance goes down quite a bit. Last one would be MQ3. Very interesting. So again, these these do not necessarily mean that MQ5 has the most information contained in it, and MQ6 has the least information. All it means is that the uh, the predictions are changed the most in their respective classes by uh, MQ5 compared to MQ6. If you have that understanding, uh, then you can, you're fine to go ahead and use this as a way to evaluate your model. So uh, that will sum up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.